Windows. It is Windows. We're not building layers on layers. We've built everything natively into Windows. And so how does that, and so how does that work? Well, I think the best person to show off the user experience is the person responsible for all the specifications and all the features in Windows 8, and that's Julie Larson Green, the corporate vice president of Windows Program Management. So let's invite Julie up. Okay, let's get started. Here I am on my new Windows device with Windows 8 running on it, and I have my lock screen across the front. So when I resume wind from sleep, I go right to my lock screen where it shows me all the at-a-glance information that I might want to know about, things that have been happening while I was away. It says that I'm supposed to be doing a demo, good thing. I have all my email messages, it's a light day, and all the things that uh, battery, internet connection, other things I might want to see. When I'm ready to start using Windows, I just swipe up with my finger and I go to my new login screen. This is called Picture, picture Password. And very easily, I'm gonna press on my daughter's nose, press on the lemonade and draw a line. And very quickly in, in, on my mobile device, I logged in. And now you all know my password, but luckily it's easy to change. <laughs> Before I get going any further, I want to show you a couple things that will help you follow me in the demo. We turned on touch points in the demo, so when I press on the screen, you're going to see my finger in a little circle there. And that's just turned on so you can follow me without an over-the-camera shoulder. So let's take a look at the start screen. The start screen is Windows. This is the place you come to when you start Windows, and it's the place you go to get to all the applications that you guys are going to build that people are going to love. All the applications that I have on here today are just samples that we've written to showcase the platform, I'm not announcing any new utilities or, or any new features in Windows. They're simply written to show off what the platform is capable of doing. So I'm going to go through here, and I'm just going to swipe to the right and take a look at all the programs. I'm swiping to the left. And let's look at what these tiles are all about. Each one of these tiles re represents an application. I have a tile for my Windows Live Mail up here telling me that Matt Berg has just sent me a message. I have my calendar. I have my news reader on my current feed. I have paused music. As I scroll down, you see the other applications. Some of them probably look familiar to you. <coughs> Task manager. <coughs> Too much practicing. Task manager, notepad, the pinned people and people that I want to interact with. I have a bunch of games. And all, everything that's on here is personal to me, and it's only the things that I want on my screen. And it's very easy for me to go ahead and customize and rearrange and make it look exactly like I want. So th this start screen, is, it's not just a launcher for programs. The start screen represents a, a unification and integration of program launching, switching between running programs, and also notifications and gadgets are all integrated into one start screen. So you don't have to look all over the place. You guys don't have to write code all over the place to, to integrate with Windows. One place makes it really super convenient, and it's highly customizable. Right, and so here I am with my, uh, I'm not in Redmond today, so I'm gonna go ahead and take this off the screen. I'm gonna drag out. Uh, it doesn't go into a mode or anything. I can just automatically drag around to where I want it to go. I can even use two hands to arrange it. I dropped it. We'll go back in. I can easily just drag around and rearrange. Go ahead and select it to the end and drop it here. Pick this one up. But you saw how I'm kind of scrolling in a long list. If I want to get faster access to all the places in, in my program list, instead of scrolling along many, many pages, I'm going to go ahead and pinch with my finger. So watch closely. I'm going to go like this, and it's going to zoom me out to see the entire set of the things that I have on my system. So I can very easily get to new places, get to the, uh, the games group. I can rearrange these as well. So I just drag it out, just like I did with the other ones. I can position things in a new place, which makes it super easy for me to go and uh, rearrange and get access to the things I really care about. So I have one group in here. I can name these groups and order these groups. This one's a, a games group. I just swipe down and select the group, and I can name the group. Using the on-screen keyboard, I'll go in here and click games. Save that. 
and now I have games. And then to go back, you just do the same gesture on the way out as I just pinch and go out. So it makes it very easy for me to customize and rearrange and to get exactly what I want on the screen exactly the way I want it. I can also customize the look of my start screen and my user tile, and that's pretty easy to do too. So I'm going to click here, press here, go to my new user tile, and we have a built-in webcam with Windows, and this computer has both a front-facing and back-facing. And unfortunately, to get a new picture, I have seen what I look like on these webcams, <laughs> not doing that. So I brought Mort, and he's going to be my, my picture for today. Whoa, I need to get out of there. <laughs> I click there. Mort. That was good. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and decide that that's what I want, select it, and change my user tile. And now if I go to the lock screen, all the pictures and things I have on my system, I just click and change my lock screen. So I showed you a little bit about how to personalize Windows. All with a touch-centric control panel as well. And personalized Windows, and uh, now let's launch some of those Metro-style applications that you guys are going to be building. Take more from me. So I'm going to go down the end here and launch a game. This game is actually really fun to play. Um, it's a touch-first, full-screen, immersive application. And as I drag across, I'm going to start to play it. And it's, it does three-letter words, so that makes it easy. Uh, and I don't mess up that one. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I see another one. And, and I can continue launching by going back to the Start screen. I'm swiping my thumb from the right-hand side of the screen and bringing up Start. I'm going to launch my Newsreader application, which is another Metro-style application. Now, these applications, their user interface for these applications you get by swiping up from the bottom. And here I can add the new feeds. I can refresh, remove, or whatever capabilities your app wants to have. They come from what we call the app bar. When I click into this headline here, it's going to give me a newspaper-like layout for me to be able to read my blog. And really fast and fluidly, I can swipe through and read my articles. We'll go back to start, again, swiping from the right and launch a popular social networking app using open APIs. Uh, we created a sample application here. I'm going to go into my news group and check out my news feeds. And then we'll launch a little video. And I know this video has soundtrack, so again, I'm going to swipe from the right-hand side of the screen and bring up the settings in context of playing the video. I have access to all my system settings that I might want to do while I'm working with apps. Here I have the sound muted. And above this, I also have the settings for the application itself. So the applications share the settings space with the system settings to make it easier for people to not have to go out of context of what they're trying to get done just to change the volume or access something about your settings of your app. So here we are back in my video, and to switch between these applications, I just go ahead and swipe out from the left-hand side of the screen. It was fast and fluid to get back to where I was. If I want to view two things on the screen, I can dock one to the right and then, or to the left, and then continue swiping. It is pre-release software. <laughs> I'm going to dock it this way. Or not. There we go. And so I can easily do two things at one time. So I can add to my news feed while I'm watching my movie, play my game while I'm watching my movie, uh, or doing my homework, or... Well, of course, Windows is multitasking from the, the kernel on up, and so all we're showing here is the fact that two applications can always be running in, in Windows. And this ability to dock them is, is a really cool ap opportunity for you to sort of create like a heads-up view of your application. And so every application has both that docking view and the side view. Now I'm going to launch an uh, application that we are shipping with Windows 8. Uh, it's Internet Explorer for Metro style. And it has here a, loaded a web page for me. And you can see how fast and fluid the browser is how easy it is for me to pan and, and zoom around in this application. 
This is all built on top of the Internet Explorer that you see today, Internet Explorer 9, all hardware accelerated, and makes it super fast and easy for me to get around in my web pages. It's also um, completely Chromeless, if you notice, and I don't think anything is better than an entirely Chrome-free <laughs> browsing experience. I couldn't agree more. Oh, I get it. I know what I just said. Oh. <laughs> He's so funny. <laughs> uh, so swiping up from the bottom, I bring up the, the app bar again, the user interface uh, elements for Internet Explorer, and I can do all the things you'd expect to be able to do in the browser. I can turn on in private and do in private browsing. I can create new tabs, go to my pinned apps, launch a pinned website. Or do that later. Or not. <laughs> I can also just easily uh, type into the browser. I'm back in there, go back to here. And type in my URL using the on-screen keyboard. Let's see, I'm gonna go to uh, Whole Foods. Or not, or not. Let's skip over to this other machine. Wow, that was loud. Okay, we're in Internet Explorer, I'm swiping, I'm zooming, I bring up the UI, and we're gonna add a pinned. There we go. <laughs> and I'm gonna go back and type in my URL, go to this Whole Foods page, and I can pan and zoom around and do all the things that you're used to doing in the browser. So let's go ahead and do a couple new things. I'm going to go ahead and select this text here by just selecting it and dragging. And it's, it's always something that you want to do to, when you're on a web page. You often want to send a snippet of some content around to someone or send a, a link or a URL. You end up having to leave your application, launch another application, find the person you want to send it to, and copy and paste in the content or copy in the links. With Windows 8, it's possible for applications to interact with each other much more directly and help the customer or the user stay in the context of the application that they're doing to complete their task. And we think this will add a, uh, create a whole new set of scenarios for you to create with your application. So I'm going to use something uh, out the right-hand side. We call these things out here on the right charms. And the charms are the way that you... that. The applications can power the system and add new capabilities to Windows. So I'm going to click the share charm. And when I do that, I see all the applications that I support the share contract, which you'll learn a lot more about in Antoine's presentation in a little bit. It also has a kind of an MRU list of the people that I've frequently shared with in the past. I'm going to launch an application called FriendSend, which is a sample application that we wrote. And you see that the content that I copied from Internet Explorer shows up inside uh, this application. This application can show the kinds of capabilities it has to do with the content coming from Internet Explorer. You, you can kind of think of sharing as a very semantically rich uh, clipboard almost that may, when all of your applications can share with each other, even with applications that they didn't know about when you wrote your application. So you don't have to try to figure out how to get connected to everywhere else. We'll help you do that through the, the sharing what we call contracts. And as, as I'm typing here, you're seeing uh, autocomplete and spell checking. That's also something that's Wait, systemized. Just spell checking, spell checking throughout out the whole system. <laughs> I, I, I was going to be pissed that they didn't applaud for that one. <laughs> I don't think you, you cook, so I'm going to choose somebody <laughs> else here. Uh, let's see. We have my friend Alice, and I'll share that. And so without, now I can get right back to browsing without having to come back to where, and find where I left off. Bring out the charms again, and go back and show you a couple other ways that applications can power the system using search. Go into search, and here you see search pretty much like you would expect in Windows 7. I can search my applications, my settings, my files. And this is what you'd expect to see, and pretty much what everyone does today, which is search your local hard drive or search the entire universe uh, over the internet. My, my Bing application here will do, go ahead and search the entire internet for me. 
But with Windows 8, applications can make their content available for people to search directly. So while in context of looking for something, it's very easy for an end user to go through and find and filter the content based on the applications that you've created. So here I have my music app. I'm going to search for Viper Creek. I think you guys are going to see Viper Creek on Wednesday. I can just go ahead and launch my music from here. Start playing the music, I think. Sound. And if I still want to see what's going on with Viper Creek in some other context now, I go back to search and I can search for tweets or any other application that has no knowledge about Viper Creek and quickly search through and see what's happening there. So the applications are really powering the system with new capabilities. And as you get more and more applications, the system gets richer and richer. So here I am in my social networking app. I'll show you one more way that applications can add power and support and show their content for people to interact with on Windows 8. So here's a going to do a little tweet about the concert that I just went to when I went and saw Viper Creek Club. So it was a cool concert. Look at that autocomplete there. Huh? I typed concert on this machine before. And I also want to add a picture. So I press the little picture button, and it took me right to my hard drive and my, doc and my pictures folder, and all the pictures that I have on my hard disk are right here. And I see that I have one. But often I have pictures in other places that I have access to. I have access to them um, on friends, uh, social networking sites, on my own social networking sites. And those social networking sites can add the capability to share content from them right into the file picker. So I'm going to choose one that we wrote called Photo Feeder that has some pictures from my friend Sarah. And I go ahead and select her picture. And so I can have pictures come from a variety of things. I don't have to copy them to the hard drive to be able to access and use them. They can stay stored in the cloud in the, inside your application and then be accessed and used without having to copy them to the hard drive. So I'm going to go ahead and import these. Feel free. <laughs> I think this amazing lights one looks good, so I'm going to go ahead and click here, and I'm going to tweet that. And there you go. My tweet is live. I'm going to go back to start. And that was really a super quick overview of some of the new things about the bold new maps for Windows 8. I showed you.